Let's start by disabling the nodes we used to manually create the light in the last lesson. Left click and drag to select all the nodes and then press Alt plus D key on your keyboard to disable multiple nodes at the same time. Now, let's create a Gaffer 3 node. Press Tab and type Gaffer 3 on your keyboard. Press Enter to select and let's connect this node into our network. We will tidy up the node graph in an upcoming lesson, but for now, I'm going to assign a color to this node. Select the Gaffer 3 node and from the Colors menu in the node graph, choose a color. I like to color code nodes that I frequently edit. As our node graph complexity increases, color coded nodes will let us quickly identify the nodes that we want to work on. Set the edit and the view flag on the Gaffer 3 node. If you now expand the scene graph, you can see that a new location called LGT has been added. If you expand this location, you will see a Gaffer location. If you look at the parameters tab, at the very top, the new locations that were added to the scene graph corresponds exactly to what we see here. This is the default location that any new lights we create from the Gaffer 3 interface will be added to. But you can change this location by simply renaming it to something else. Let's change this location to LDEV underscore rig. Any new lights we add will be created under this location. Next, right click on the Gaffer interface. From the pop-up menu, go to add PR man light and choose Pixar dome light. Select the dome light and press the enter key to rename it. I'm going to call this HDRI. If you now expand the LDEV underscore rig location in the scene graph, you can see the HDRI light location has been added. And by expanding this location, our light is also visible in the viewer. Let's select the light in the Gaffer 3 interface and switch over to the Material tab. From the Color Map parameter, let's load our HDRI map like we did before. You can now see that the HDRI is also visible in the viewer. I'll also expand some of the geometry locations to give me a better visual reference when working with lights. If you left click to select our HDR in the viewer, you can now use the Transform and Rotate tools. Press W key on your keyboard to enable the transform manipulator. But since this is a dome light, I'm only concerned with the rotation. Press the E key to enable the rotation manipulator. Let's render this. But this time, let's do a live render. Live rendering gives you an interactive feedback of the changes we make to the scene. You can tell that it is a live render if you look at the monitor tab, and the thin progress bar at the bottom should now be green instead of blue. If you change the rotation of the light, you won't be able to see the updates in the live render. This is because you need to specify which locations are included in the live render. Let's do that now. In the scene graph tab, select the light location and right click on the checkbox under live render updates. Choose include. Any updates we make to this light will now reflect in our live render. Let's change the orientation of our light again. And as you can see, we can now see this update as we rotate the light. Because we only included this specific light, any additional lights we add in the future will need to be manually added to the live render update. But if you go back to the scene graph, right click on the light location, select included with children. Now, any new lights you add will also be automatically included in the live render. With the light selected in the Gaffer 3 interface, let's switch over to the objects tab. The objects tab contain a few important parameters. We have the transforms of the light which I mostly use to reset the changes I made to the light. If you expand the transform parameter, you can see the value set by the manipulator tool from the viewer. You can reset these to its default state by left clicking on the yellow icon. Next, we will go through a much more efficient way of setting up lights in Katana. In the 3D viewer, click on the manipulators tab and enable lighting tools. Now, what if I wanted to add an additional light? I could of course create any light by using the Gaffer 3 interface just like we did before. But Katana's lighting tools interface provide an extremely intuitive way to create new lights. Depending on your monitor resolution, you might have to resize some of these tabs. So I'm going to resize the monitor tab in order to see the rest of the menu items in the 3D viewer. If you click on where it says Pixar Disk Light, you will have a pop-up menu with all the available lights in Renderman. I'm going to choose Pixar Rec Light. Now while making sure that my viewport is set to the perspective camera, I will move around until I find a position that I like. Click on the camera position button in the 3D viewer. This will create a new light at the position you are viewing from. And an interface with some of the useful parameters of the light has been overlaid on the 3D viewer. Let's mute our HDRI light so that we can see the effect of our new light a bit better. 
In the GAFA 3 interface, left click on the checkbox below the M icon. The HDRI is now muted. Let's adjust the parameters of this new light. You can left click and drag the parameters towards the right to increase its value or to the left to decrease it. I'm going to scale our light up a bit by pressing the R key and change some of the parameters of the light. You can add as many new lights as you need in the same way. For the look dev setup, I'm just going to use a simple HDRI. So I'm going to delete these light by shift selecting them in the GAFA interface, right clicking on it, and then choosing delete. I'll also re-enable the muted HDRI light by clicking on the M icon. I will explain more features of GAFA 3 when we get to lighting our scene. In the next lesson, we will recall some of the things we learned earlier in order to provide a better understanding of the concepts we learned so far.